everyone, this is Katie Nichols from the MITRE ATT&CK team. I'm here today to talk to you about ATT&CK Navigator and a use case for it. So Navigator is a tool we released last year that helps you do basic navigation annotation of ATT&CK techniques. We saw a lot of people doing this kind of layer comparison with matrices in Excel, which is great, but we wanted to create a tool that is purpose-built for this purpose. So ATT&CK Navigator, just like ATT&CK, is free and open on GitHub. You can pull it down, you can use it locally. Lots of info here, our change log, a readme. We also have a hosted instance. If you don't want to have to pull it down, maybe you're not a developer, you just want to get started using it, cool. We have a hosted instance for you that is linked to from this usage section. So this is what the attack navigator looks like by default. We also have a version for mobile attack, but this is automatically displaying enterprise attack, which you'll recall is kind of how the adversaries get in and what they do after they've gotten in. So you'll be pretty familiar with this view, right? It's the attack matrix across the top. We have these tactics, the adversary's technical goals, and under each of those tactics, we have techniques, right? How those adversaries achieve the goals. In a navigator, we have this object called a layer, and right, that's just a way that we can capture different information about these techniques. So I'm gonna walk you through these different buttons we have across the top, and then I'm gonna take you into a use case for navigator based on threat intelligence. So let's dive in. The first control we see is locking multi-tactic technique selection. What's a multi-tactic technique? Well, you'll see in attack, some techniques, like for example, access token manipulation, fall under multiple tactics. It's a multi-tactic technique. And by default, Navigator will select both of those techniques across the tactics, but you might say, well, I only wanna select one of them. Cool, Navigator gives you that option. I just care about access token manipulation under privilege escalation or defense evasion. Easy enough. Then we have the search menu. For example, if you wanna see all techniques that mention registry, you can do a quick search and those will pop up. You can also do multi-select. So this allows you to select either groups or software, which you'll recall we have pages on our attack site where we go through open source reporting and get examples of different groups and software using attack techniques. Really important to note that this is not all encompassing, right? We can't possibly map everything these groups have ever done. We don't have that visibility, but we take a sampling based on limited open source reporting that we map. And so in Navigator, you can select different techniques that the groups or the software pages we have in attack. So we can go ahead and select, for example, copy kittens or deselect those. Next up, the deselect, right? I have techniques selected, I want them to not be selected anymore. Pretty self-explanatory. Next up, we have layer controls, right? Navigator thinks in layers of information. So good analysts always give context about what they're doing. So, you know, maybe I add a name for this. I'm gonna call it APT3 29 comparison, and I'm gonna give some awesome description about what I'm doing so that other analysts who look at this know what I mean. You can also download layers. Behind the scenes here, this is being built in JSON. So let's say you want to take your layer here and export it to another structured format or another tool. Great, you can download the layer as JSON. You can also export your layer to everyone's favorite analyst tool, Excel. You get a lot of requests for people who say, hey, I'd love a matrix in Excel. This is an easy way to do that. We all have PowerPoints we have to make, presentations, maybe one image of the navigator to include in your presentation. You can also render your layer to SVG, an image type, and then you can include it in your presentation to make yourself look really awesome. We can also filter, right? Maybe we wanna only select Linux techniques or Mac techniques. This is also where if you wanna focus on pre-attack techniques, you'll recall pre-attack is left of exploit. What do the adversaries do before they've gotten in? You can select prepare and then ACT is Enterprise Attack, which is what we have up right now. Next up, you can change how you sort the techniques. Maybe you want to alphabetically or reverse alphabetically or in terms of the score, ascending or descending, totally up to you. You can toggle that there. You can also set up colors here. Now, for example, maybe I want to change this tactic row background to a different color because blue is my favorite color. You can do that there. We'll also dive into this in a little bit in our threat intel use case about how we can make this gradient for different scoring. 
moving along, we have this toggle view mode. You know, by default, you see the full technique names, full tactic names, but maybe I just want to see the first letters of those. Or I just want to see little rectangles if I want to visualize something, you know, in a simpler way. So you can toggle that there. Going into the technique controls we have, maybe I want to disable certain techniques. You know, I don't want those to be in my view at the moment. I can go ahead and click toggle state and it'll gray it out and it won't be part of my view at that moment. And then there's a separate button for show and hide disable. Maybe I don't want it to be grayed, I just want it out of my view. Click the show or hide disabled and it'll pop up or back depending on what you need. Next, background color. Let's say access token manipulation. You know, our team knows that this is a technique we have no coverage on for defense evasion. So we can go ahead and make that red. You can also give it a score. You know, let's say this is high priority one, we have no coverage. Maybe we give it a score of zero or one or two, whatever you, you've decided for your team. You can also put a comment. So, you know, maybe we want everyone to know we need to focus on this. So you can add a comment. And when you do that in Navigator, this yellow underline is gonna pop up on your technique. So that's how you know there's a comment in there. And then last, clear annotations on your selected techniques. So, okay, access token manipulation, we wanna clear that one, easy enough. So that's an overview of the Navigator controls. So now I wanna dive into a use case, specifically for, for threat intelligence. Now, I think attack is a really useful tool you can use to look at adversary behaviors, kind of look at what groups and software are doing, and then prioritize based on that. So I previously written a blog post where I showed you this kind of cool overlay and navigator with different techniques, different colors, and I wanted to dive into how I actually created that. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer, click on this little plus sign, create new layer. And this layer, I'm going to select APT3 techniques. So I'm going to name it APT3. Maybe I would add a little more layer information in here, give some more context on what I'm doing. I'm going to go into the multi-select menu, and I'm going to scroll down to APT3 and select. Again, remembering these are just the techniques that the team has mapped based solely on open source reporting, but it's things that we know APT3 has done in the past. And I'm going to go ahead and give that a score. So I'm going to say for each of these APT3 techniques, give that a score of one. Great. Now I'm going to create another new layer, and I'm going to name this APT29. I'm going to repeat the same process, going through selecting APT29 techniques. And then this time, I'm going to give these a score of two. Easy enough. OK, so now I have two separate layers with techniques for APT3 and APT29. So next, I'm going to magically combine them with the Create Layer from Other Layers option, which is one of the options when you create this little new tab here. So Create Layer from Other Layers. When I click on that, these yellow rectangles are going to pop up. It's going to tell me what navigator is identifying each of these layers as, what letter, so A, B, and C. So in this case, I want to compare B and C. So in that score expression, I'm going to type B plus C. I want to bring in the information from those two layers. Lots of different options you can input here. You can check out the help menu for more on that. Help menu is up here in the upper right. And once I've entered my logic, I'm going to just click Create. So now to help me keep track of what I'm doing, I'm going to name this, right? Like a good analyst, I'm tracking what I'm doing, and I'm not making typos. APT3 plus APT29. And right now, you're kind of like, wait, these are all red. This is not helpful. Well, if you scroll over, what you'll see is the scores are actually different, right? You remember we assigned one for APT3, two for APT29, and then adding together, three is going to be the score for techniques that both groups have used. So what we can do is we can go to this color setup menu and say, OK, for my scoring, my low value is going to be one. That's APT3. My high value is going to be three for both groups, and then my middle value obviously would be two, because that's halfway between one and three last time I checked. So let's go ahead and select colors for these. In this case, let's choose the default yellow for APT3. You can also specify hex if you have a specific yellow that your heart is set on. Let's choose blue for APT29, and then yellow plus blue equals green. Cool, so let's make green both of those groups. So then if I click off of that, 
I can see my APT3 techniques in yellow, my APT29 techniques in blue, and then the techniques that both groups have used based on OSINT reporting we've mapped is three, and those show up in green. So this is a quick way, and I'd encourage you to add in you know, what you know about different groups, different software, what they're doing. But it's a quick way that you can compare what different groups are doing and try to prioritize. So if these are the two threat groups I care about, I would say these scores of three, which are the techniques both have used in green, that's a great place to start. You know, pass these to your defenders. Say, hey guys, these are the two groups we care about. Here are the techniques they're doing. If your defenders have done something like doing a map of overall attack coverage, you could add that in here too with that same kind of logic. You know, let's say for example, accessibility features is a technique both of these groups have used and if you do an overlay with your environment of you know, what attack techniques you can detect, your defenders tell you, we can't detect accessibility features at all. That could be a great place to start, right? The threat cares about, they've done this technique, and we don't have visibility. So you know, using the attack navigator, you can kind of visualize different things, whether it's group or software behavior, whether it's coverage of your environment. The whole idea is it's a simple tool to help you visualize and use attack. So we hope that was helpful as a starting use case for Navigator. We hope to bring you more of these videos in the future. So let us know, was this helpful? Was it not? And as always, please reach out with any questions or feedback you have. Thanks all.